So today what we're doing, we're going to do a walkthrough, a diagnostic teardown on a Denso 10P30 style compressor. This is not a genuine Denso unit, but that is the style of compressor. This compressor has failed. It is locked up. We're going to take this compressor apart and try to figure out why it's locked up. If you look here, I'm putting a bar on it. I cannot turn the snout of this compressor. Something's going wrong in here. The this compressor has very little air gap. I can turn the pulley, but I cannot turn the compressor shaft. So we're going to start taking this compressor apart, and we're going to see if we can see what failed. First thing we're going to pull off, so we're going to take the dry plate off. There is a nut that retains the clutch. Take our clutch nut off. Then this is similar to an older style GM clutch, where we have a removal tool thread the remover in. Sometimes these will come off by hand. This isn't as much of a press fit as the GMs are. This one is a little bit stubborn. Put a wrench on this. And I notice once I pulled the clutch off that we have some air gap. The pulley is moving. So we don't have a pulley issue. We definitely have an issue internal to the compressor. So I got our clutch off. You can see inside here there is a sheer a square key that holds the drive plate to the compressor shaft. Get that square key out of there. And notice as we're going through this, I am wearing rubber gloves while I am working. Once we start opening this compressor case up, there is pag oil inside of this compressor. And as we know, pag oil is a skin irritant, so make sure you're wearing appropriate personal protective equipment while you are working with pag oil. We have our clutch pulley here. Let's pull the snap ring. little bit stuck here. Let's free it up. There's your snap ring. Then we need a puller to pull the compressor off or pull the pulley off. You do not want to use the shaft of the compressor to push against. We're going to use a little bushing here that we're pressing on the snout instead of the shaft. Just using a two jaw puller to back this off. This one shouldn't be particularly tight. This one wasn't particularly tight. As you can tell by the lack of wear on the clutch hub face, this compressor was not in service for a very long time. Pull the rest of the pulley off. We've got a field coil. Our field coil is held on three bolts. So this one does not have it. Some of these, there's a ground eyelet that goes up here that the compressor grounds through the compressor case. On any of these Asian compressors, note that's usually a Phillips head screw, except it is not Phillips head. The Asian manufacturers use JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard, which is slightly different from Phillips. If you ever wondered why you're taking a Phillips head screw out of an Asian car and you're, it's tight and your Phillips head screwdriver is camming out, it's because JIS is not the same as Phillips. So make sure you have the right tools to prevent that. So now we've got five bolts that go around the pistons. This compressor also you can see down here at the bottom there's an oil sump in this compressor. When we take the back head off I'll show you the oil pump. So we have five bolts that go around the compressor body and two more for sealing the oil sump. So let's back these out. So we've got the 
plenty of oil inside this compressor. The front head off. The front head easily pries off. Looks like this thing has some dye in it. But so far it looks pretty clean. There's crush washers under the head of each bolt that are what actually seal the bolts to the compressor body so we don't have leaks coming through. It's just a little crush washer like you'd have on a drain plug. That's our front head. Then sealing the front head, we have a front gasket. There's a suction and discharge valve plates. The suction and discharge valve plates usually stick down pretty good because of the oil. And note this also, there's an alignment pin, but there's one on each side that prevents them from rotating to give you proper alignment when you are assembling. Work this up off of the alignment pin. And you can see this is our suction valve plate and our discharge valve plate. One valve per cylinder. This is a 10 cylinder compressor. So that is our front head. What I'm trying to see is with anything removed if I can rotate this compressor yet. Uh, I'm going to, if I was trying to put this compressor together for service or if I was just resealing, I would never do this because you're going to damage a seal surface, but I'm just going to use a pair of pliers to try to rotate this shaft. Nope, not yet. So we turn this over, we should dump out some oil, a bunch of oil coming out. Try to take this back head off. We said we had alignment pins here. We gotta work the head off of the alignment pins. have our rear head and I said this compressor has a crankcase. So you see right there there's an oil pickup port. We have an oil pump, this Gerotor style oil pump in the back head of the compressor and it's going to actually pick up oil from the crankcase and pump it through the compressor and help pump oil through the system. So this one actually does have a sump inside. I'm going to take the oil pump out. Set this compressor back down. What I'm looking for here, I'm looking for where in the oil pump. And I can see it's not going to pick up on camera, but there is somewhere inside that oil pump bore. And the oil pump should rotate freely and smoothly. And I can feel it is not particularly free. Now let's see with this separated. We can turn the shaft. Nope, so we have something else failed in this compressor. Tip this back up. Take the valve plate off. see our failure. If you notice, I'll pour the oil out here. If we look down in the boards of this back housing of the compressor, we see we have scuffing. When I pull the center section apart, I'll show you the pistons. 
This style of compressor is unique in that there are no piston rings. So we have a very, very tight cylinder to wall clearance. And it looks like something happened, something most likely thermal expansion issue, that this compressor scuffed. The last thing to split the center section, this manifold that is at the top has to come off. So with that off, we should be able to split the two sections of the compressor. Don't do this if you are trying to repair a compressor. I'm going to prying on things trying to get this apart. Because I've got a seized compressor, I've got things that do not want to turn. So you see, looking at these pistons here, we said it's a 10-cylinder compressor, horizontally opposed. So we have five pistons, and notice these are Teflon-coated pistons, but there is no piston ring on these pistons. How these seal, there's a groove cut in the end of the piston, and the pistons, then there's a little bit of oil that gets trapped between the piston and the cylinder wall. That is what provides the sealing. Now we've got a roller bearing in the back of the case here. That is what supports the end of the shaft. It's not particularly healthy, but it's not horrible. So let's see now with just the front bearing and the pistons if we can rotate this shaft. Nope. So now we're going to have to try to get these pistons out of the compressor. And you can see two. That one's tight. This one doesn't move. This piston is what seized. So it does not rotate. Notice all of the wear on the squash plate. So our root cause of failure on this compressor is if you look down here at the bottom, I've got a bearing welded itself onto the shaft. Take that piston off. That's the cause of failure. We had a thermal issue, most likely or a lack, definitely not a lack of lubrication, and that bearing is stuck. If you look, you can see looking at these other pistons, you can see that should slide freely. And we've got a lot of wear in the top where it was rotating against that seized ball. Note the pistons look pretty good. 
There is wear and scuffing in the bores. My hypothesis at the moment would be this started putting off metal as evidenced by the significant wear on the squash plate. And that wear metal started going through our pistons and cylinders. So we can see, I'm going to take a glove off here and feel these with my fingers. What's that feel like to you, Steve? Is that Inagata Vita Vita or White Room? That's in a White Room. That's with White dark Room? dark curtains. <laughs> At the station? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's why this compressor failed. It looks like we had a thermal event. The compressor got overheated. And we stuck a ball. So, that is what a horizontally opposed 10-cylinder compressor looks like inside. We tore this compressor down. It failed. The customer said it locked up. We found our root cause of failure. Now we have some more testing that needs to be done once we go back to the vehicle. We know why this compressor failed. This compressor failed most likely because of an external source most likely because of high compressor temperature. Now we can go back to the vehicle and say, did we have a charge issue? So remember what the compressor needs for it to live. We depend this compressor not so much because it has an oil pump, but generally we need oil flowing through the system to keep the compressor alive. And we need cold refrigerant coming back from the evaporator core to moderate our compressor temperature. My thought at the moment, without, obviously we couldn't see this vehicle before what the field compressor was it was operating before, but that we can go back and see once we put another compressor on this, we can bring this system up to spec and see do we have a charge issue, do we have something that's wrong that we are overheating this compressor.